So you've got a camera and all its accessories. You're excited and ready to make a short and simple video. At this point, you're asking yourself, where the heck do I begin? In this video, we will discuss how to get started using video as an instructional tool in your classroom. We will discuss the basic camera functions, how to borrow a camera when you need one, tips on good video production, essential editing techniques, and finally, Georgia Perimeter College faculty will share their ideas about how to use video effectively. The JVC hard disk camcorder is available for checkout by faculty from the Center for Teaching and Learning, located on Georgia Perimeter College's Decatur campus. Items are available on a first-come, first-served basis, and all they ask is that the items be kept for a maximum of two weeks to provide an opportunity for all faculty to have access to them as needed. Make sure that the camera has enough battery power to last through your entire photo shoot. In order to remove the battery, slide the battery button located on the underside of the camera in the direction of the arrow. This unlocks the battery from the compartment and then it can be lifted out. To reinsert the battery, slide it back into place following the direction of the arrows on the battery pack. The battery pack will snap in place when it's secured correctly. To charge the battery, connect the AC adapter to the connector located at the rear bottom right side of the camera. To turn the camera on, rotate the on-off button upward while pressing the blue knob. In record mode, you can also turn the camera on and off by opening and closing the display screen panel. If the camera is on and you open the camera and see a black screen and you're trying to figure out why, most likely the camera lens is closed. Rotate the lens cover switch to open the cover. On the inside panel, there are several buttons, but the only one we really need to concern ourselves with at this point is the play record button. When the camera is in the playback mode, the index screen for all available videos appears on the display screen. When the index button is pressed during the record mode, a maximum recording time appears on the screen, which indicates the available space on the camera's hard drive. One hour of standard video takes up about four gigabytes of hard drive space. Remember, your video footage is being stored on the hard disk drive inside the camera. Since there's a limit to how much that can be stored, you want to be aware of how much storage space is available so that you don't run out of space in the middle of a project. Pressing the index button once more brings up a battery life meter, which gives you the percentage of battery life remaining, as well as the approximate time available in minutes. The select set button helps you find your way around the thumbnail images of your video clips displayed on the camera display screen. You will move the select set button north, south, east, and west to highlight the desired clip. Finally, to press or press the button down to select the clip for playback on the video screen. As far as accessories, you will find that a tripod will turn out to be an excellent investment even if you use a digital camera or a video camera only rarely. And the thing that we are very blessed with at Georgia Perimeter College is that the camera is so small um, that the students really don't even pick up on it because it's at the top of the, of the you know, in the back of the room. Uh, in the previous days where I've recorded it, we had some older technology where, we, where I had a video recorder and a camera that sat on a tripod in the middle of the room. I would say to you that yes, that indeed did distract from them and made them a little bit more apprehensive, but today we have really um, 
current technology, and I don't think it distracts. I think it only enhances. Use the pan tilt handle to pan left and right slowly and up and down to frame your shot as desired. As a new videographer, for the most part, it's probably best to reposition the camera when it's off. That way, the viewer doesn't have to be aware of any jerky motion in the middle of a scene. One, what's the plan? Just as an English instructor advises a student to never start writing a paper without a plan, a thesis statement, supporting arguments, never start recording a video without a plan. Take the time to sketch out details regarding what you want to record and why. The professionals call this a storyboard. It can be doodled on a writing pad or written on index cards, whatever. But the time that you take on the front end will save you a heck of a lot of frustration on the back end. friends are grading them so everyone grades they have a we have a rubric for the class and everyone's graded they have to grade the visual quality of the project the audio quality of the project they have to grade the grammar and mechanics of the project um, that creativity is another criterion um, what else do we look at pace and timing as well as the quality of the pitch Imagine a tic-tac-toe board laid out on the display screen. Aim for the corner spaces, the top third or bottom third of the screen. This strategy tends to allow the viewer a better idea of the subject's perspective. Try thinking of your video production as a collection of short scenes that tell a story. What occurred to me was to go on the web and find something that was multimedia because so many ballads are set to music and in fact there is a contemporary version of this poem on the web which is a great resource for lit literature classes and literature students. So rather than having someone in the class read Mother Dear May I Go Downtown instead of Out to Play and March the Streets of Birmingham in a Freedom March today it's much more powerful to look at a multimedia presentation on the web. WYSIWYG. WYSIWYG is a computer term that means what you see is what you get. Do whatever's necessary to frame the shot as you would like it to be seen. And I remember my own personal experience in the early, say 2003, 2004, working with a corporation where we would sit in front of our desk to view presentations and speeches by the company vice president or president. And so when someone said, how can you teach public speaking online? I said, well, I've seen it. I've experienced it. Everybody's not going to fly in to give a group or a regional office a speech. You can think of a tapeless camcorder as an external computer disk drive with a camera lens. The USB connector is located on the front of the camera. Use the groove on the underside of the camera to open the compartment. Insert the smaller USB connector into the port on the camera. Insert the other end of the USB cable into the port on the computer monitor. After the computer has been recognized by the computer, you can navigate through the directory structure and copy video files onto the main computer drive just as you would from an ordinary USB drive. It's interesting, after I presented this at a conference recently, a faculty member who doesn't know any technology came up to me and said, I want to do this in my class, I really want to do this, but do I have to learn how to do it or can I just have somebody come teach the kids? And my answer is that it's so easy now because the software has, it's not like it was in the old days when it was very difficult to edit. You can pretty much drag and drop pictures. It's not any more difficult than Word or anything else that we do. Let's just 
take a look at the taskbar over here. It says import video, click on that. It leads you through how to import the video that you have exported from your Import audio or music. In some cases, you might want to use music as a background to your title or your credits. There's a link here also for make titles or credits. You just click on it and it pretty much walks you through. Hopefully, you are now familiar enough with the video camera, video production, and editing to get started experimenting with the use of video as an instructional tool. The best form of flattery is imitation, so feel free to run with any of the ideas shared by the humanities faculty members at Georgia Perimeter College.